So how do you get an assistantship position? Now I'll talk first about um, a research assistantship. Now sometimes the position may be advertised on the department's web page or in some cases some universities have you know web pages for individual professors so you might want to check um, that as well to see if there's any position announcement on the individual professors web page but frankly um, most of the time what happens is that these positions are given to students who are proactive that means students who have you know um, contacted the professor beforehand and um, had a little conversation about you know the way the the students can fit in into the research program of that particular professor before you know coming into the program and sometimes um, some students will start their studies before trying to get um, you know funding for their masters or PhD the bottom line is you just need to contact professors if you are looking for a research assistantship now I know I said you should contact professors but I don't mean you should just contact them and ask uh, you know bluntly that you need funding um, so that's not the way it works so if you really want to be successful in the process you need to have an understanding of the basic you know things that a professor is looking for in a particular student so with that understanding then you can draft a cover letter an effective cover letter that will captivate the professor and you know make him or her want to know uh, you more and know more of your qualities so guys take this very seriously this is a big deal okay because it is going to be the first look at your writing style so if it doesn't fit with um, what is expected of a graduate student or a potential graduate student then you would probably not get the opportunity to have further discussions with that particular professor so the truth is if you mess this um, particular cover letter up or cover email up if you mess it up you would probably not get the chance you know to work with that particular professor I've seen this happen many times where people just you know um, put some things together and send it to a professor most of the times when you do that you either get no reply or a negative reply now sometimes you get a negative reply because the professor does not have funding at that particular time so that happens and when that happens you just either wait till the professor is uh, going to have a new grant which is not advisable or you move on to you know another professor or another or another university so i used to tell my mentees that contacting professors or graduate programs is an art and you need to understand the fine details to make uh, your art really beautiful so you really need to know how to market your qualities to fit into the thinking of a typical college professor now to buttress my point let me tell you a little story um, so there was a colleague of mine who made inquiries about um, you know funding for one of his friends um, at a business school you know for an MBA program and um, the professor he met was really excited about the prospect of you know having someone uh, come into the program so he told uh, that my colleague that oh no prop no worries um, tell the guy to contact um, us so eventually when the guy contacted this professor uh, he just concocted something together and um, sent it to the professor and um, the only thing he did was to copy you know my colleague and upon seeing the email my colleague had to share that with me because it was just filled with a lot of um, you know grammatical errors and um, you know 
the flow of the uh, sentences were just off, what happened after that was that the professor did not even bother to reply, despite showing enthusiasm in the first place about meeting this guy that we have talked about. So, like I said, you don't want to mess this up. Take it very seriously because it is a significant writing sample that will show your qualities to that particular professor. So, take it seriously. For more details on how to effectively craft a captivating cover email to a professor or graduate programs, you can check the link below for more explanation on that particular subject. Now for teaching assistantships, um, these are mostly available to PhD students or mostly reserved for PhD students. And depending on the department's um, needs, it could also be made available to master students. So it just depends on the department, but mostly it is reserved for PhD students. In most programs, either you like it or not, as a PhD student, you need to have at least one semester of being a teaching assistant. Now, if you are an international student, the bar for becoming a teaching assistant is higher than if you are a domestic student. For international students, you may be required to have a very high score on your test of English as a foreign language, which we call TOEFL, or IELTS, which is a substitute for TOEFL, um, especially on the speaking sections. So for example, in my alma mater, you need to score about 26 uh, points out of 30 before you can be competitive for a teaching assistantship position. Now, if you don't meet that cutoff, some university gives you an opportunity to take um, an exam on campus before the semester starts. So if you can get into the country um, a little early uh, before the semester starts and um, take that kind of exam, um, if you pass, then you may be competitive for those kind of positions. So it just depends on the university or the department and the criteria they have uh, for students to become a teaching assistant. In any case, the graduate coordinator of that particular department is the best point of contact uh, for any inquiries on you know, teaching assistantship positions. And if you cannot locate who the graduate coordinator is, they would definitely include a number or an email that you can contact for any inquiries about the program. So you should contact that particular email to make inquiries for, you know, the possibility of getting a teaching assistantship position. Just so you know, in some cases, it is um, given as an automatic benefit if you are admitted for a PhD program. I've seen situations like that. So, like I said, it depends on the requirements or the criteria that the university or a particular department has. In other words, the teaching assistantship position comes through the department and, or the graduate coordinator, but the research assistantship position comes um, through individual professors. So that's a distinction that you should know. So for administrative assistantships, if you happen to find a vacancy somewhere, um, let's say on the, on the library's webpage, all you need to really do is to respond to that, um, you know, call for applications, depending on the qualities they, you know, they listed in the call for applications. So that is pretty much clearer than teaching assistantship or research assistantship positions where, you know, the qualities they need might not be really clear um, to you before coming into the program. And that is why I have created the, um, um, the guide in the description below. Now, before you even apply, I always advise that you try to contact either the graduate coordinator or a professor before you, you know, apply to any program. 
Now, I have seen situations where a student really wanted to work with a particular professor um, for his research, but could not get a position because the professor did not have the funds or the grants to, you know, employ him as a research assistant. So the individual sent a very captivating email to the graduate coordinator. And because this guy, uh, you know, is a good student, so the graduate coordinator, together with the head of department and others in the particular department, created some sort of administrative assistantship position for him um, so that he can, you know, continue his studies pending the time that that particular professor will, you know, have the funds to employ him as a research assistant. So I've seen situations like that. So it's very, very important that you introduce yourself to the department by, you know, sending a very good email, a captivating email, like I call it, to the graduate coordinator or specific professors before you apply for your master's or PhD. So that's all I have for you today. In my next series of videos, I'm going to start talking about, you know, the top funded universities in the United States. And I'm going to focus on those that get the most research support because that is essentially what, uh, you know, universities use to support students for their master's or PhD research. So I'm going to start talking about those universities in my next series of videos. So if that sounds like something you would like to learn, please subscribe to the channel by clicking the red button below. And um, don't forget that you can also share this information with your friends. And also I drop a lot of spontaneous knowledge on my Instagram page and also on my Facebook page. So if you want to, um, you know, get to access spontaneous tips that I might frankly not be able to post on YouTube, please follow those pages um, so that you can get those kind of tips. That's all I have for you today. I am Best Man and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.